Good morning, Bucknutters. Welcome into the Bucknuts Morning 5 here on Monday, April 6, 2015. Happy opening day to all the baseball fans out there. I am Dave Biddle, and I am joined by Jonah Booker, a.k.a. Jay Book. Let's say you have to bet your car, not that you'd want to do this, but let's say you had to bet your car on who Ohio State's starting defensive tackle next to Adolphus Washington will be this season. It's looking like a five-man battle, so your five choices are Tommy Shutt, Joel Hale, Donovan Munger, Tracy Sprinkle, or Mike Hill. Or you can go off the board and pick maybe an incoming freshman. Who do you think is going to be the starting defensive tackle next to Diesel? If I have money on the line, I'm going with Tommy Shutt. All reports are that Shutt has uh, really bought into the strength and conditioning program this off season. He shed some bad weight. Right now he's getting the crack. At first I would have said Donovan Munger, but it looks like Shutt is trying to is trying to, you know, really grab that position. I think you will see a, a nice rotation with Munger, uh, as well as Joe Hill coming in there. And as you mentioned a couple weeks ago, you had Tracy Sprinkle getting a couple reps with the first team. And you may have uh, a couple incoming freshmen who may come out to shoot, ready to play some ball, and Robert Landers, guys like that. I'm going to go with Munger. It's so close. You make a good point with Shutt, and he's getting the, the first team reps right now. So he's kind of the leader in the clubhouse. It's kind of the guy you have to beat. But I think one of the young guys is going to beat him out, either Donovan Munger or Tracy Sprinkle. I'm kind of torn between those guys. I'll go with Munger. Um, as I said before, I think it's important to point out Munger was the only backup defensive tackle that played against Alabama. They went with a kind of a short. They didn't use much of a rotation in that game. Obviously, they had the starters, Adolphus Washington and Mike Bennett, play a lot of snaps. And then Munger was the only backup D tackle that played in that game. So, But you're right, there. shuts coming on. We'll see what happens there. Um, moving on. At running back, Briante Dunn obviously is not going to challenge for a starting role. He's not even going to challenge for the number two role. But he's a guy that is his stock was on the rise because of what he did on special teams. Urban Meyer talked about this last week. My question to you, Jay Book, can he see meaningful snaps at running back? And I don't mean stealing carries from Ezekiel. I don't mean if it's like a, a huge play in a big game, Dunn's going to be out there. But can he be a guy that's going to be more than a fourth-quarter mop-up guy? Well, the thing with Briante Dunn, it was never really of a question about his ability. The guy has, is a stellar talent. The question has always been, is he willing to do the small things to really elevate his game, to buy in to the program, such as being a force on special teams? Right now, this now or never for Briante Dunn. He needs to have a sense of urgency from all indications from uh, Tony Offer. He's really doing a heck of a job getting the reps an opportunity that's been afforded to him with Elliott being out. Do I think Dunn's going to be able to get some meaningful carries? I think that question is going to be contingent on um, how they plan to really use Curtis Samuel. You know, Mike Weber's coming in this fall. They told him he's going to get some reps. So right now for Briante Dunn, he needs to either step up or step off because his time is running out. If he can bring that, that game that he had at Canton Glen Oak, you know, really elevate his play. I think he can get some carries in in there um, because think about this, Dave. Ohio State is going to be blowing a lot of people out this year. It's going to come down to who in the fourth quarter are going to get get those snaps. Elliott's going to be out the game. To me, I think uh, Curtis Samuel's going to be out the game because he's going to be splitting a lot of first-team reps over at the H um, hybrid role and a little bit of running back. So, it's going to come down to Dunn, Ball, and Weber. Who's going to be the man to get those late game carries? And Dunn, the way the way what they're saying is he's positioned himself really well here. And real quick at safety, I found it interesting that uh, we got a chance to speak with uh, Chris Ash uh, last Thursday after practice, and uh, he, uh, he really challenged Tyvis Powell. He said, you know, and Chris Ash is not one to really say anything critical about his players to the media, um, and you know, he said Tyvis Powell needs to be more physical. You know, needs to tackle better. And these are things fans have said, but you know, you've really, I haven't really heard Chris Ash say this too much. I've heard Urban say it before, but this is the first time Chris Ash really made a point to say, Titus needs to be more physical. I'm really pushing him to be more physical. I'm really pushing him, um, you know, to be a better tackler. Uh, you know, talk about that a little bit, uh, Jay Book, and also talk about whether you think a Cam Burroughs could push him for playing time. Could a Eric Smith push him for playing time, or is Titus just completely 100% locked in as the starter? I think he's locked in. The coach is loving, but Chris Ash, you know, he's seen something in practice that other people are not privy to seeing as far as the media, which is, you know, a lack of fundamentals when it comes to Tyvis Powell's tackling. 
He's never been a great tackling. For some reason, that that whiff, that whiff tackle that he had against uh, Cobb in Minnesota still stands out like a sore thumb to me, and it's a you know it's a sore highlight for uh, Tyvis Powell. He needs to really bring his game when it comes to you know the fundamentals of tackling. Some people want to do it. Some people have to be taught. Some people have to be pushed to do it. It sounds like this is a situation with where they really have to push Tyrus Powell to do it. As far as the backups there, I really like Eric Smith. You talk about a guy that's dripping in talent, the ceiling sky high for him. Cam Burroughs, you know, he's another guy who's going to get pushed. They're bringing in guys who are just as talented, just as highly regarded as far as their rankings. They really like Hooker, who also is in the mix there. So it's going to be interesting to see which one of these guys really step up. But I also see uh, – Eric Smith getting a little bit of playing time in that Nichols Nichols spot in the uh, place of Amani Reeves. On the recruiting front, Nick Bosa took an unofficial visit uh, to Ohio State with his father uh, on Saturday. Took an Ohio State practice, watched Big Brother Joey go at it, and uh, you know Nick Bosa ranked as the number two strong side defensive end in the country, the number eleven overall player in the country according to the twenty four seven Sports Composite. He is a five star recruit. And if you're wondering out there, is there any chance that he's going to go somewhere else? Well, there's always a chance. But 100% of the 48 crystal ball picks have him going to Ohio State. Uh, I mean, I think it's as close to a lock as you could possibly get. And uh, I don't know, have you studied his film much? He's, for those that are wondering, he's a little bit smaller than Joey. If you don't know, he's you know Nick is six foot four, 265. Joey's listed. He used to be listed at six five. Now Joey's listed at six six. I don't know if he grew an inch or if he just talked them into putting an extra inch on him in the. Uh, uh, press guide, but uh, Joey's listed at 6'6", 275, Nick's at 6'4", 265, so a little smaller than Big Brother, but uh, the Buckeyes are going to be fortunate to have another Bosa if it does work out. Uh, give me your insights on that situation, Jay Book. Well, a lot of people are wondering, hey, when's he going to pull the trigger? When's he going to pull the trigger? You know, listen to what his dad said. His dad said if this was Vegas and if he was a betting guy, the smart money would be on Ohio State that he would end up there. As far as his film... There's a reason they call him the beast reincarnated. The guy is an absolute <laughs> animal. He's a fast twitch defensive end. They say right now his fundamentals and his game is a lot more polished compared to his brother Joey coming out at the same time. You're talking about a guy who five star, highly regarded. He's an animal. It's in the genes. When he gets to Ohio State, you're talking about another, you know, first year player who's going to see the field right away. The question is, can he get, you know, another highly regarded guy next to him? There was Sean Gary, a defensive tackle, maybe Josh King on the other end with uh, Cooper and the other defensive ends that they're looking at. But you're talking about an absolute game changer in the younger Bosa there. We've got to talk some hoops real quick. I mean, kudos to Wisconsin. I mean, you, Kentucky going for the first undefeated season in college basketball since 1976 when Indiana did it. And, you know, it's not like they were prohibitive favorites over the Badgers. Like, it wasn't like Wisconsin was like 20-point underdogs. Wisconsin was only a five-point underdog in that game. But the Badgers took care of business, took down U.K. in the Final Four on Saturday, 71-64. to Now, Wisconsin will play Duke, and you're thinking, okay, Wisconsin's going to be an underdog again. Can they get it done again? Guess what? Wisconsin's not an underdog against Duke. Wisconsin is favored by one point, so not a, they're not a big favorite, but they are favored, which I found intriguing, Jay Book. Um, I like Wisconsin. I, I, you know, I, I thought they had a really good chance to beat Kentucky, and it worked out, and you know, it's going to be a tight game, but I, I'm going to pick Wisconsin to win, and this would be the Big Ten's first national championship in basketball since 2000 when Michigan State won it, so it's been 15 years, um, you know, maybe I'll have to take a shower afterwards, because I'll feel dirty for rooting for Wisconsin, but I've been doing it lately, uh, maybe it won't feel that bad, but I'm going to root for Wisconsin tonight, hopefully they can get it done, give me a prediction, I like Wisconsin to win, what are your thoughts? I'm, I'm right there with you, I'm going with Wisconsin, cheering for the Big Ten, if Wisconsin can pull this out, what is that, the, the first, you know, college football uh, and basketball men's sweep since the 40s. So you're looking at a Wisconsin team that's playing some darn good basketball. Those guys are hot. They shocked the world against Kentucky. And you look back at Duke. Duke's playing really well, but leading into the tournament, Duke wasn't playing too well. You know, they got knocked off by Notre Dame. So I think Wisconsin, with their big guys being able to pull uh, Okafor out a little bit, I think is going to create a couple problems. You know, Wisconsin has the personnel to run, you know, multiple sets, multiple guys at Okafor, 
you know, to have a couple guys get in foul trouble, but I'm right there with you. I'm cheering for the Big Ten uh, tonight and Wisconsin. Let's see what they can do. Great stuff out of my man Jonah Booker, Jay Book, coming strong. Quick programming note, uh, I'll be co-hosting on 97.1 The Fan in Columbus today from 3 to 6, filling in on Common Man and Company. Again, that's from 3 to 6 today on 97.1 The Fan, so tune in if you want some extra Buckeye coverage. We'll also be talking opening day for baseball. Um, I'm sure my Reds are going to have a tough year, but I'm still going to be the eternal optimist. Hopefully the Reds can get it done. Good luck to the Indians fans out there as well. Thanks again to Jay Book. Thanks to all the listeners out there. I appreciate you tuning into the show. I hope everybody has a great day. Take away best damn band in the land. Bye.